Yep. This is stuck from sitting apparently. It oh, did it turn is. over, okay. but it had very little compression. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is how it is. All these right. Are, these are a bit rarer to find these days, so there's <laughs> that's why that well I'm gonna put it out there. It's it's more than I want to tackle to try and put back together again. Yeah. Have you done many Takatis or many? I did one other one. Yeah. And finding parts was fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So this one's mostly complete. Mm, I can yeah. see it's it's missing the rear caliber, which if, yep. this is how I got the machine. Okay. And like I said, it did turn over when I got it, but I've had this thing for quite some time. Okay. And huh, how long have you had it for? Probably 15 years. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I, I, I thought, well, someday I'll try and get time to get to it. I've got a machine shop too, so. Oh, cool. Um, a lot of times I'll do them from the ground up. I'll do crankshaft, you know, bore the cylinder. If it needs a, a liner, I'll put a sleeve in it. Mm -hmm. But this one is getting to the point where it's like, uh, these are hard enough to find parts for as it is, and I'm not going to try and put it back to yeah. running condition for somebody. It's going to take me more than what it's worth when it's done. Yeah. So. Yep. It's uh, <laughs> it is a parts machine, and or if you want to take the time to fix it, fix it up. Now, I sprayed it down with this. This is all this is is an anti-rust agent. Okay. To get the chain to move, and I mean, it okay. was, it's been sitting for a long time. Man. Okay. Well, this came from a guy um, over in Janesville. Okay. And he had it with two other machines, and he decided he was going to keep the best one and then sell the other two. And I, I bought one of the other two. Okay. He had a really nice one at one time. Um, I thought, oh, geez, it'd be nice to have a Takati and a. A tri Z, uh, you know, all the the big five ATV yeah. or ATCs back in the day that were two strokes that were fast. You know, mm -hmm. Honda ATC 250R was on my list. Um, I got a couple of the ATCs that ran, so I didn't bother with the ones that didn't run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's uh, that's how this one came to be, and and uh, it's typically. You know, if I get something, I try and go through it 100%, and if I can't do that, I'm not going to... Mess around with even, it? Yep, I'm not going to make the endeavor. Yeah. I, I do sell on on uh, um, eBay in the off-season, sell parts, and sell on, you know, marketplaces is where you found this. Yep. So... Very cool. Yeah. All right, we finally made it back home after the five-hour round trip to go get this thing. This is a 1984 Kawasaki Takate 3 250cc two-stroke three-wheeler. Thing is pretty beat, you can see, as you guys heard in the video, when the guy was talking, the seller was talking, um, he said this thing was sitting outside for 15 years. He's owned it for 15 years, he was gonna restore it, but he said he doesn't have enough time or enough money to do it. <laughs> so. He said that if he restores it, he's gonna go all out and he just does not have the time to do it and find all the parts and all that stuff, so. But yeah, this one is pretty beat, as you can see. Um, it's got pink plastics on it that used to be red. You can see they faded over time. Um, everything's rusty and locked up on this thing. You can see how rusty the chain is. It does come with the silencer. The silencer was there. And the pipe is actually pretty nice in this thing, surprisingly. It has a gas tank. It's got the radiator on there. It's got the gold rims in the front and the rear. It is missing the back caliper. But I think that's pretty much all it's missing. Um, obviously, everything needs to be gone over and replaced, but um, at least it's pretty much complete. It has the air box has the carb, has the coil, CDI box, and the spark plugs in there. It looks like he maybe took out the spark plug and tried to put some fluid down the cylinder. This machine was advertised as uh, kicking over with little compression. I got there and it was locked up. So it was up for 1200 bucks. The guy said he had a ton of responses on this thing, so he went down to $1,000 since I came and it was locked up. And he said he never updated the listing, so that was kind of a bummer. But we're going to try to get this thing running today. I'll see if we can free up a ring and pop this thing over. And we'll see if she fires up for the first time. And probably it's got to be probably 30 years because the guy that sold it to him 
used it as parts machine so you know it's probably been sitting for over 30 years at least it's gonna need a lot of work we might fully restore it we'll see if we can get this thing running though first <laughs> look at the seat too yeah she's been outside for quite a few years all right unloading the three-wheeler is always fun That was better than expected. Look at that thing. So if we get this thing running, we'd have the Takate 4 and the Takate 3. All right, a little walk around here before we start digging into it. You can see the fenders are just annihilated from sitting in the sun. Tires, seen better days. They're the dumb hops on there. Looks like these were studded at one point for the ice. All right, let's first check the oil and the coolant here. So coolant, it looks like we have to take off this rack. Those are 12 millimeter. Oh, looks like those hold on the, uh, the forks too. All right, that should be enough to get that free at least. All right, let's see what's going on in here. Oh, believe it or not, there's coolant in there. That is a great sign because it means there's not a leak in the system, usually. So radiators holding fluid, that is sweet. These radiators are nearly impossible to find. I owned a 1984 Kawasaki Takati 3 before and finding parts for it is nearly impossible. So if you can get them mostly complete when you buy them, it saves a lot of time and money because um, I've probably spent hours searching for parts. So coolant is in there. That is that is great. So these engines can actually be swapped out with the KX250 engines. I'm not sure if this is a Takade engine or a KX250 engine. You can see right here it says KHI KX250. So I'm not sure if it's the actual Takade or the KX250. They're the same engine. They can be swapped right in. Um, from 1984 so let's see if there's any oil in here I don't think this thing has a dipstick nope all right we'll get a makeshift dipstick here I hope there's something in there we'll have to see if it shifts through the gears too I didn't even check if I was driving five hours, I was going to take it either way. <laughs> so, I really didn't care. Uh, let's see if I can get that in there. Uh, it's hard to fit down in there. Ooh. It's not looking too hot in there. Huh. I don't know if there's a passage over here. Yeah, I can't even fit the dipstick in there. Oh, there's a window though. Right there. And it looks like there's oil in there. All right? It's hard to tell. Might be empty. Very tough to tell. We'll have to drain it out and see. 
All right, so just trying to kick this thing over. You can see it is locked up pretty tight. So if she does not want to kick over, that could be due to a couple things. It could be the piston stuck to the cylinder. It could be the crank rod bearings are stuck, not allowing the crank to move. It could be the crank bearings. It could be the um, flywheel is stuck to the stator. So there's a couple possibilities as to why this thing could be stuck. It also could be the gear in here is bad or locked up. So a couple different things we can check here. Before we do that, I want to make sure this thing is a 1984. Just so that if we have to order parts, we know for a fact it is a 1984. And looking at the VIN here, it looks like this frame was painted a couple different times, like black and green. We want to look at the tenth digit here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it is an E. So if you look online, Google dirt bike VIN year lookup, it will tell you that E is 1984. So this is in fact a 1984 Kawasaki 250. So let's just see if it shifts here quick before we go any further. Be interesting to see. All right, so it's in neutral. You can see it kind of moves. The front wheel is locked up, so that's why it's having a hard time moving. Ooh, it's not gonna shift now. I don't know. Oh, there we go. There's first gear. I don't know if it wants to shift in the second. We'll see. Oh, there's second. Third, fourth, fifth. Oh yeah. It shifts. There's neutral again. <laughs> Can't believe it shifts. That's crazy. All right, well, that's a good sign. I'll show you guys the exhaust pipe over here. There's the silencer for it. You can hear it's all full of stuff. So I'm guessing the air filter is too. So let's get the seat off and check out that air filter. All right. Let's see if the seat can come off. The seat has seen better days. Here's the little lever. You can see it doesn't really spring back anymore. It's kind of bent. But it does still kind of function. <laughs> All right, and then these plastics, you can see, like I said before, were once red. So, I'm not sure how you get those back to the original red color. If anyone has suggestions, let me know, because the plastics are actually not too bad. They're really not cracked or anything, or broken. So, we can either probably restore these or paint them if it comes down to that. But they probably make new plastics for these, which we would get if we restored the whole thing. All right, so the air box looks like it's on the side of this thing. You can see the weird shock set up here. And the linkage is kind of weird. Kind of like off to the side, almost looks like it's bent, but it's not. We've got the seat latches right here. And I believe this used to have a U for a grab bar. I don't, know, but I don't know if somebody cut it off or what. But there's a couple weld marks here. A couple pieces broken off. Actually still has the rubber piece for the, the gas tank. That's crazy. I mean it's broken, but it's still on there. A couple broken bolts off here. But I'm interested to see what's in the air box. All right, who thinks there's a mouse in there? I'm up here, so. Oh boy. This should be exciting. That one's stripped out. Oh boy. Oh, oh my gosh. Just packed full. <gasps> Holy. Oh man. That is bad. That is really bad. 
We should get Vinny over here to look at it. What do you think, Vin? It's like I smell something. Checking out the tires. What do you think of it, Ben? Checking out the seat. He's really inspecting everything, seeing if it's worth it. Benny, what do you think? What's the verdict? He's really checking it out. I think he likes this one. Benny the Bike Whisperer. What do you think, Finn? What do you think? What do you think about that? Huh? I think he likes it. He's not barking. You like it? Alright, well, Vinny approves. Alright, let's try to get this nest out of here. We got the air box all cleaned out in there. That was a huge mouse nest. That could also be the reason this thing's locked up. Maybe I sucked something through the carb. So, I think what we're gonna do is now take out the spark plug and just see what's going on. Oh, that's, uh, that's tight on there. Oh, man. She's on there. Oh boy. Uh -oh. Seems like the plug might be a little stuck. Huh. That's not good. See how tight that is. Let's see if we can get some penetrating oil down there. See if that loosens up a bit. <laughs> that is a bad sign right there. Hopefully the threads aren't wrecked. Wonder if water got in there. really hard now. <laughs> Not great. aren't wrecked. Oh man, that is in there. That is a slow process. Get 
make it a little easier. Holy cow. I don't know what the heck was going on there. Oh yeah, she's pretty uh, cross-threaded in there. Darn it. Kind of cross-threaded in there. It's hard to see. See, they're kind of cross-threaded. I mean, they're not horrible. I think they could be tapped to clean them up. Could be worse, definitely could be worse, but uh, we're going to get this thing soaking with some penetrating oil. Let's kind of spray that down there. I feel the piston in there. Looks like that's, the whole cylinder's filled. And let's see if she moves at all. Oh, she's locked up pretty tight. Um, let's see, what do we want to do? Let's take off the carb and just look down the engine and just see why that thing is stuck. All right, trying to get this carb off. You can see the boots ripped too, pretty good. Big crack in the boot right here. So it definitely needs a new intake boot or manifold. Get this clamp off all the way. For testing purposes, we might repair that if we can get this freed up. And uh, let's put some gasket maker on there, seal up those, those cracks, and then we'll attempt to start it. But that's if we can get this thing free. All right. Oh, is everything crusty in there? Holy. <laughs> yeah, she's a little crusty. <laughs> oh, she is crusty. She is really, really crusty. Oh my gosh. What is that thing? Is that a dead nose? What the heck is that thing? Is there a mouse in there? Oh, that's just powder. Huh, this whole thing's caked with powder. Alright, so that, that's not looking good. That means that's what's inside the engine. Um, I guess let's get these, I guess let's get this manifold off. See that bolt is that came out of there. I mean, it's not good. This bolt barely come out of here. I'm starting to feel like a thousand dollars for this thing was a tad much. Maybe if the engine was free, a thousand dollars, but man, this thing. Is beyond rough. I'll show you guys the carb here in a second. It is the worst carb I've ever seen in my life. Oh, came right off. Whew. You can see it's all ripped here. 
the big cracks in there. You can see right through. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah, that's uh that's exciting stuff right there. Lots of powder. Alright, take a look at the carb here. Look at that. Oof. Oh, is that just packed full? I think the carb is actually corroding. Oh my gosh, that is horrible. Look at right here on the carb, it actually like broke off, it looks like a little bit. Look at that. What are the chances that slide moves? One in a billion? Is <laughs> it choke move? No way. Yeah, no. Nope. Everything's tight on the carb. That's usually a bad sign. <laughs> That is not good. And I'm looking at that, I mean, it's really bad. Ask it that's holding them on. There we go. Hopefully that protected the piston a little bit. Oh man. <laughs> Holy. Ooh, that is a really, really, really bad sign. That means there's water in the engine. Oh man, oh my gosh. I have never seen one this bad before. Oh. Well that's not good. That's not good at all. That is really, really bad. See if I can get some of that out of there and we'll spray some penetrating oil in there. Jeez. Well, let's see if we can see the piston. There's the rod. So that means crank is probably shot. But we'll see if we can free her out. She's a tad rough in there. So, that's not great. I mean, I don't know how that happens, but some somewhere I was getting water into it. It must have been through the carb. All right, we're gonna douse this thing with some penetrating oil. this looks like. The piston looks pretty good from the bottom. Put a little oil in there too. Just, just for, just for fun. A little oil going down there. More lubrication. All right, let's see if anything turns over now. <laughs> That's wishful thinking, isn't it? Well, where do we go from here? I, 
guess. Let's go to the stator side. See if we can rotate the crank over here. Oof, she's pretty rough. Not as bad as the uh, the carb though, but uh, it's pretty tight. There was no water in there, not too much at least. A little bit of oil got in there, so I guess water probably went by there because there's no, I don't think there's much of a gasket there. Oh, she's, she's pretty solid on there. She is not, not even a little budge. Oh, did I see some movement? That's uh, that's a no-go. All right, looks like we're gonna have to take apart the top end here. Um, let's get the gas sink off and the pipe off and we'll check everything over. Gas tank doesn't look too bad. No holes in it, at least. One of these was broken off, one of the mounts. Right there, you can see. Other than that, it wasn't too bad. All right, we've got the coil there. The little CDI box right there. So, those are all intact, that's good. I think we've gotta get the coolant out next, and then the, uh, the mount right there off. All right, let's see what kind of coolant's in there. See if this is all corroded down here. All right, coolant is like the only thing that looks good in here. Looks brand new. <laughs> I don't know if you just filled it up with coolant before you sold it or what, but that actually looks good. Usually that would be all brown and crappy looking, so. Well, we've got one thing that looks decent. <laughs> Oh jeez, where the heck did that come from? Big moth. <laughs> you guys see that? Is there a moth living in there? Uh. Every bolt on this thing is horrible. Lots of cool in there. Oof. Those nuts are on there. A little sticky. Take those off the rest of the way. Okay. Break this one free here. Surprise the whole stud isn't coming with them. Lots of rust. Let's see. It was on there pretty good. <laughs> that one was pretty easy.
All right, here we go. Let's see what this looks like. A little tap through with the hammer. Should pop off of here. Possibly. <laughs> See all the coolant dripping down. The head looks pretty good. Look at that. Not too bad. No pitting. It's hard to tell what the piston looks like with all the cooling on top of it. I'll try to soak that up a little bit. Bunch of gunk on there. Look at that. It's like a paste. I don't know what that is. Jeez. It's crazy. Spray a little penetrating oil. Lightly tap the uh, cylinder with the hammer. See if we can just kind of free up that that piston. Sometimes it's just some white surface rust. In this case, I don't think it's light surface rust. Yeah, it doesn't budge at all. I think that crank is locked.
That is not budging. <laughs> Jeez. How is that possible? Not even a little budge. All right, we're gonna work at this for a little bit. See if we can get this to budge. We've been hitting on this thing for about half an hour. It is not budging whatsoever. So we're gonna try to take off the side cover and crank over the gears if they're not all rusted on there. But let's drain the oil first, see what kind of oil's in it. Oil drain plug came off a little too easy for my liking. Look what's in there. There's a little bit coming out. Not a whole lot. Let's see. Look at the corrosion there. Let's see what this looks like. <laughs> oh boy. Everything is extremely tight on here. Whew. Color looks good. Look at the gel though. Jeez. Let's see. She's not going to budge. Let's see if we can just take off the whole cover with the kickstart mechanism attached. That's kind of the plan here. Oh, come on. I think it's held on by that clutch. Cover off. Woo. That was a lot of work. And there's not even a Nut on the other side that we can turn. I thought maybe there'd be one over here. But yeah, we can't even. That's just locked up. So, doesn't look like that's gonna help us at all. The clutch is actually pretty nice. Clutch basket's nice and everything. Looks like the bottom end had plenty of oil in it. That's how the oil just drained really slow. So, yeah, bottom end looks pretty decent. At least the clutch side. So I'm guessing the crank is just locked up and it's not budging, allowing that piston to move up there. So piston stuck and crank. 
gonna try a little heat here. Holy cow. Cylinder's finally off. Jeez. The piston's just completely wrecked. Cylinder might be salvageable. Holy cow, that took me like three hours to get that thing off. Just completely rusted on. That was absolutely horrible. So hard to get off of there. I nicked it with a hammer on the top a little bit, but not, not horribly. See right there, a little nick. That's right at the top, so that's, that should be fine. We might be able to save this thing. That would be awesome. As you can see, crank is completely shot. Barely moves. We're gonna try to get the engine out now and split the case. All right, swing arm bolt, or nut, I should say, coming off. Let's see if we can pound this thing through. Really hope this budges. Oh, oh it's coming. Cannot believe that. I cannot believe that came out. Miracle right there. Oh. That's awesome. I'm gonna quick cut this off. Let's see.
All right, we got the engine on the bench. Let's get the clutch off of here. The clutch actually looks pretty good. The ball fell out. That goes in there. Not. Got a washer. That. Whole clutch can come right off of there. Woohoo! Got the bearing. All right, you can see the gross oil in there. We can get the shift shaft out of there. The helper out a little bit. Just be a simple clip. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes not. There we go. gear goes on first the bigger one all right that flywheel is pretty crusty all right I don't know if I have a puller like that all right turns out I did have a puller for it let's see if it works all right the bolt wasn't long enough let's try it again Wow. Well, that flywheel is wrecked. Look at that. Magnus pretty much just corroded right out of it. Holy cow. That is bad. <laughs> that one's rounded right out. Awesome. Well, I think we're gonna end the video there. I'm uh, kind of sick of working on this thing right now. It's been probably seven and a half hours since I've been tearing this thing down. And uh, I'm just getting tired, it's hot out, and that, <laughs> that bolt is not coming out, so. We're gonna leave that until I get cooled down and take a little break and then we'll then we'll come tackle that bolt. But as you can see, this thing is going to need a ton of work. Um obviously I probably shouldn't have bought it for a thousand dollars. It it uh it's completely clapped out. Every single part on this thing is going to need to be pretty much new. So I think we are going to look for parts online and then determine if we're going to restore it after that. If we do restore it, I'll get a sandblaster and then um, I've got my paint gun so we'll paint everything up really nice, sandblast everything and make it look really, really cool. But that's if I can find parts. So if anyone has parts, let me know in the comments. But uh, obviously I need a new flywheel, a new crank, new crank bearings, new piston. 
potentially a new cylinder that's pretty pitted in here. You guys can see it's really, really pretty pitted. Um, we'll try honing it out, but I, I don't know if that's salvageable. The piston was pretty much just stuck in there. Um, and then we need a new manifold. Um, and then obviously new plastics, new air filter, new chain, and new rear uh, brake rotor, um, new grips, new cables, new tires, new hardware, new plastics. So basically it needs everything, which really kind of sucks, but yeah, that's what you get for a thousand dollar Ducati 3. You don't get much. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the video on the teardown. I was hoping we could free it up today and potentially hear it run, but obviously it was way too rough for that. And uh, it's just gonna need a ton of work. So stay tuned for the next video. Hopefully we can restore this thing and uh, make it rideable. There's not a whole lot of Ducati 3s left, so I'd hate to part it out, but that might be what we're gonna do if we can't find parts, so. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for the next video, and until next time, we are out.